and welcome. I'm Kathy, and I serve on the team at New Roads. Thanks for joining us today as we journey through the season of Advent together. As we worship together, we'd love to hear from you in the chat box at any point. Let us know where you're joining us from. Say hello to a friend watching in another location. Or let us know what you hear God saying to you today through our experience together. If you're brand new to New Roads and you're looking to connect with us a bit more, click on the link that says, I'm new, either in church online or on our website. We've got some of our most friendly and knowledgeable people who are looking forward to meeting you and connecting with you. You can also use the chat box or the request prayer button in church online to let us know how we can pray with you and for you today. As we get ready to begin today, right now is a great moment to extend an invitation to someone you know to join you for church online today. You can invite someone by text, email, or social media. Just send them the link, newroads.online.church. Advent is also a great opportunity to participate in giving to those in need in our local community. We invite you to participate in our Advent Giving Tree, where you can sign up to buy an item for a family in need. For more information, visit our website, newroadscatholic.org. We hope you'll plan to join us for Christmas at New Roads this year. For all the information on our Christmas celebrations, stay tuned for the latest information and updates on our website. If you're planning to join us online this Christmas, be sure to check out our Christmas Eve kits, which will help you join us more fully in worship from home this Christmas Eve. As we begin, we want to let you know that the Mass you'll see broadcast today has been pre-recorded from our North Worship Space, while our South Worship Space is under construction. We can't wait to be back in the upgraded South Worship Space very soon. Thanks again for being here today. Now, it's time to worship together.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, it's the third Sunday of Advent, friends, and welcome as we gather to worship today. As we begin, let's pause for a moment to ask God to open our hearts to the presence of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It's time to hear God's word to us today. Now is a great time for all families with children to take advantage of our kids' videos online where kids get to hear God's word applied to their age and stage of life. There are videos for preschoolers, elementary age kids, and preteens. You can set your kids up on another device to watch any of those videos right now at newroadscatholic.org kids. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. i 
will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for He proclaims peace to His people. Near indeed is His salvation to those who fear Him. Glory dwelling in our land. and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss, truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. 
Soldiers also asked him, and what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, it's already December 12th. As usual, the Advent season, this season of preparation for Christmas, is marching along as quickly as ever. It's a perfect time to announce our Christmas schedule. We'll be celebrating Christmas online and in person at 3.30 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve. If you're planning to join us online this Christmas, be sure to reserve a Christmas Eve kit. If you live locally, you can pick it up. And if you're out of state, we can mail it to you. For our full Christmas schedule and all the details, check out our website, newroadscatholic.org slash Christmas. Well, it's mid-December, and it's the third week of our Advent message series we've been calling Missing Peace. In this series, we're looking at the topic of peace. Peace is a theme of this season, the season of Advent the coming of the Prince of Peace. But also, it's something we're missing these days. We're missing peace. We want peace. And yet, peace feels elusive. And not just because we feel stuck in a pandemic beyond our control. Sure, lots of us are thinking, I'll feel peace when COVID is over. But I'm sure there are other things disrupting your peace too. Maybe you feel like you'll finally have peace when you've got all your gifts picked out, wrapped, and ready. Or when you get accepted to college. Or when your child gets the right support for that issue they've been struggling with. We all have things that feel like they're holding our peace hostage. Life without peace is living in a kind of frenzied discontent. We're stressed and feeling anxious and all over the place. Speaking of anxiety, though, I want to be clear that this series addresses the general experience of feeling stressed or anxious from time to time and not the medical condition of anxiety, which is a serious condition that requires medical support and consultation. Doctors, therapists, and medication are all amazing gifts from God to help manage mental health conditions like anxiety. What we're looking at in this series is the feeling we get when life is full of uncertainty, which, by the way, it always is. Life has felt especially uncertain in the last couple of years, though. So much has been uncertain, so much has changed, so much is still unknown or even feels unknowable. So we kicked off this series saying that peace is not about living in a perfect world where everything is going right, where everything is predictable and controllable. Actually, peace is not dependent on our circumstances at all. That's because Peace isn't found in the absence of problems. True peace is found in the presence of God. Last week, we looked at a practical way to find peace. We said that peace is not just about you and God, but that we're invited to find peace in community. One amazing way we experience God's peace and presence is through serving others this Christmas. You can serve others 
by serving at a Christmas mass at New Roads. Or you can serve in many other ways outside of church, too. If you missed last week, you can watch last week's message on our website. This week, I want to look at what do we do when the uncertainty just keeps growing, when things aren't getting better, when God isn't answering our prayers, and it just seems to be going in the opposite direction of peace, just more stress, more uncertainty. What do we do then? The great news is there's a very specific answer in today's scripture, but stick with me because this is something you're going to be tempted to pass over or completely ignore. We're tempted to pass over what we hear today because it just sounds too simplistic. But that's because we don't dig into the deeper level of what we hear. So don't miss this. We're looking today at a letter written by the Apostle Paul to a local church in a region called Philippi. What makes these verses believable, what makes them not unrealistic, but deeply compelling, is who wrote them. Paul, one of the primary leaders in the early church. Paul, Paul traveled far and wide, spreading the good news of God's love. But it wasn't an easy journey, not at all. First of all, Paul had undergone a personal transformation. He had literally done a 180 in his attitude toward the message of Jesus, moving from working against Jesus and his followers toward making spreading Jesus' message the primary work of his life. In his work to spread the good news, Paul had been shipwrecked, snakebit, arrested, and abandoned. He'd been stoned and left for dead. The letter we hear today was written by Paul when he was in prison. And here's how Paul, who's had his share of uncertainty and hardship, here's how Paul instructs us to deal with times of uncertainty. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. To which we say, Obviously, you don't understand what's going on in my life. But wait, Paul gets uncertainty. Paul gets struggle and suffering. So rejoice. What is there to really rejoice about? Now, the key here is those three little words that follow rejoice. Paul says to rejoice in the Lord. What does that mean exactly? Well, we know what it means to rejoice when it comes to other things, like rejoice in your promotion, rejoice in your new car, rejoice that you made the team. That makes sense. We get that. All of us know what it means to rejoice in something. It's when we focus on that good news to the point that the emotion associated with that good news begins to wash over us. People say, what are you so happy about? And you say, I got accepted. I made the team. I got the promotion. Paul is saying, take the time to really experience the emotion that comes from the reality of God's grace and mercy and love in your life. Allow the reality of what God has done for you to become your focus so much that you begin to feel the emotion of it. This is why we worship. Every week we come together to remember who God is and what God has done for us. His amazing, unending, uncomplicated, unconditional love for us. This is why we sing. Music is emotional. And it's an emotional expression of God's goodness. It allows the truth of God's love to wash over us. It fills us up with the reality of God's goodness and grace. This is why I can't help raising my hands sometimes when I'm worshiping through music. It helps me to feel what the words are saying. It feels great. Try it with me sometime. Rejoice. 
All right, so if I'm wrong, if you hate it, you never have to do it again. The point is, I'm telling you, and it's not just me. St. Paul says, when it feels like there is nothing to rejoice about, rejoice in the Lord. Always. You can always rejoice in the Lord. Because while circumstances may change, God doesn't. You can always rejoice in the Lord. And then he says this little line, which I love. He says, your kindness should be known to all. I love that because isn't it true that when things are uncertain, when we are lacking peace, we are usually not our best selves. For most of us, our kindness is dependent on our circumstances. When life is kind to me, then I'll be kind to you. But if I've had a a bad day, don't even think about cutting me off because I had road rage before I started the car. But Paul says, even when things are uncertain and hard, be kind. Don't let your circumstances ruin your relationships or ruin your character. Be kind. Then Paul says, maybe the most difficult part of this whole reading, have no anxiety at all. Seriously, Paul? You're telling me no anxiety? Don't worry? Now that is not very helpful advice by itself. In fact, if we're honest, we hate it. People say, oh, don't worry about it. And we're thinking, oh, thanks. I hadn't even thought of that. Just don't worry. Be happy. You have a song to go along with that? That is so helpful. But Paul doesn't just say, don't worry. This is a setup to the main point he's saying. Instead of worrying, do this, he says. But in everything, in every situation, in every friend situation, every family situation, every medical situation, every relationship problem, in every school situation, this next thing can be applied to every situation. He says, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Again, it's tempting to stop listening. This is too simple. Just pray. But there's an important word here we can't skip over. Paul says to present your requests to God. The word present literally means to reveal. It's used in the context of solving a mystery. Instead of only praying God, help this to happen. Spend the time necessary to understand for yourself and then to reveal to God what it is you really, really, at the deepest level of your heart, desire. On the surface, I desire a job. But what do you really desire? What's behind that? What's driving that request? Paul is encouraging us to reveal to God the deepest desire of our heart. That is the way to respond to times of uncertainty. Times of uncertainty have a way of surfacing our deepest insecurities and our greatest fears. Most of us pray at the level of needs and wants. But Paul says, you need to go deeper. When we do that, What is behind those legitimate requests begins to come to the surface. My insecurity, my concern for my family, my need to feel important, my need to be viewed in a certain way by my peers, my need to be viewed in a certain way by my kids, my fear that maybe God doesn't even know my name. And you thought these words from Paul were too simplistic. Paul says, come on, I want you to dig that stuff up. Dig it out. Move beyond the habit of praying, help me find my car keys, or even 
Get into a good school. Dig deeper. Get into the habit of asking, why is that so important to me? Why am I so worried about it? What's underneath that? Here's a way to make it easy to go deeper. Of course, this is, an, this is all about inviting God into this place in your life. So it comes down to reflecting with God, praying, inviting God into this space with you, or recognizing that God is already there, waiting for you to show up. So start with something like, God, I need you to fill in the blank. Begin with that issue. That thing your mind goes to whenever you have a spare moment. The thing that's robbing your peace. God, I need you to. And then stick with it. Go a step deeper. Be honest. God, I need you to do this. If you don't, I'm afraid that, fill in the blank. The truth is, your fears parallel your deepest desires. Peace is available to those who are willing to go to that level of prayer. When we make our deepest, most inner requests known to God, Paul says, then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God wants to work in your life on a deeper level, not just changing your thoughts, but changing your heart. In order for that to happen, we have to be willing to dig under the surface to reveal to God what's really going on inside us. What if you could have peace in spite of the fact that there is uncertainty? What if in those moments of high stress and high anxiety, you learned to pray in such a way that at the end of your prayer, you experienced true peace? God's word to us today, spoken through Paul, encourages us to pray until peace comes. Not until the circumstances change. They may not. And yet, when we stick with God, when we share on the deepest level what is holding peace hostage, when we're honest with God and ourselves, God can help us to see beyond our limited view, to see that the road we've been going down over and over again isn't the only way. God reminds us that we are loved and created for blessing and shows us that there's another path, a new road. Our prayer isn't about getting God to change our circumstances. Prayer is about allowing God to change us, allowing God to give us peace. Let's profess our faith together. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and, earth, and in Jesus Christ, his, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, crucified died, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended into hell. hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring to God the longing of our hearts and our desire for the well-being of all people. That we may be a church that models peace, love, and joy, and is an example of profound responsibility. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders will understand the critical needs of those whom they serve, and that God will give them wisdom to address those needs. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world's people may unite to address the serious issues of caring for the earth for the coming generations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That refugees and displaced people may find welcome and safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be alert and responsive to the needs of the poor, the sick, the lonely, and the lost, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have died may experience the joy of eternal life in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, as you call us to be watchful and aware, direct our focus to what really matters in a season of frequent distraction. Help us to find peace in you so that we may share your peace with others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pause at this moment every week to remember how much God has given each of us and to give some of that back to God and his church as an act of gratitude to God. The easiest way to make a gift is to text New Roads, all one word, to the number 202-858-1233. When you text us, you'll get a link sent back to give online via credit card, Venmo, or any online platform you prefer. Your support of New Roads enables us to spread hope and light this Advent season. Thank you for your support. Hear the angels sing this hope for everyone to announce our King. There's hope for everyone. What good news they bring. There's hope for everyone. Angels sing there's hope for everyone. They came from
gifts are prepared, so I invite you to pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all your holy people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Saint Luke, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's pray now together with longing for the coming of God's kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your friends, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. healed.
let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that our shared worship may prepare us for the coming feasts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us today. It's great to be with you. We love you. Have a great week, everyone. Each of hearts of shepherds, each of hearts of kings, even as a baby, you were changing everything. You called me to your kingdom.